you can easily edit red row 8K footage with only the base model MacBook Air. Hey guys, the POV photo guys here. I'm a professional photo and videographer and I want to share my experience about the new M1 MacBooks with you. This will be a user-friendly review, so if you're more interested in about the tech or the geek stuff, just go and find another YouTube video about it. There are tons of great reviews. I would like to focus more to the user side and try to explain what the new M1 MacBook is capable. As I see now, everybody is looking for new laptop and especially MacBooks. But what we learned about computers in general. If you are a professional photo or videographer, you're always looking for more processor like E7 or E9 and more RAMs like 16 is minimum, but 32 is better, 64 is way more better, or you also search for integrated or dedicated video card. And if you use Photoshop or Lightroom and goes to the the Adobe website, they are recommend you minimum 16 gigabyte of RAM. But you heard a lot of times more is better, so you go with 32 gigabyte of RAM or even 64. But with the new M1 chips, you have to forget everything you learned about it. So back in the day, the computers and the laptops need different processor and video card and everything in a different box. But with the new M1 chips, they just made one chip and it does all the job together. So no more looking for processors and video card and everything. With the new M1 chips, you have just only two options, the 8GB and the 16GB. That's it. You heard right. And if you think this is not enough, you are wrong. What we know about the MacBook Air, this is a nice, tiny, cute laptop. You can go around to the office and make office works with the MacBook Air. But if you're a professional, like a photo or videographer, you need a MacBook Pro or even an iMac. This is the base model MacBook Air with 8 GB of RAM and 256 GB of SSD. And it killed my old MacBook Pro. So you have the same performance in the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. The only three difference, the Pro has one more GPU, what is not a big deal. The touch bar, what is honestly, I don't like it too much. And the third one is the fan. What is not a big deal? Somebody says, yeah, you need a fan because when you're doing a hard editing or hard video rendering, you need a fan because the MacBook Air is not enough. But I make big video projects and Lightroom catalogs and it doesn't even matter because the heat is doesn't goes up. With the base model, with only just eight gigabyte of RAM, you can easily edit big wedding catalogs like thousands of photos and you can easily edit 4k videos or even 8k videos yes you heard it right i tried red row 8k footages with this macbook air honestly i was a bit skeptic when i saw the reviews first because everybody want to drop out the video about the new m1 chip first and because as I saw everybody who showed the video timeline how they easily edit the video it was just a single timeline and yes I'm using single timelines for vlogs like this but for my client works I'm heavy editing and I use a lot of layers and timelines and everything so not only a single timeline but honestly I was shocked how fast and responsible even with Lightroom editing or in video editing in Final Cut Pro the programs are loading so fast in a second. My old MacBook Pro has a i7 processor with 16 GB of RAM and 2 GB of dedicated video card. And it takes around 10-15 seconds to open a Final Cut or Adobe Lightroom. With the new MacBook Air it's less than 5 seconds. But I had some hiccups while I'm editing video. Sometimes the voice was cut off and I had to reopen the application. And it happened like 10 or 15 times per day. What it sounds a little bit much compared with my MacBook Pro, which is sometimes are lagging and I have to wait like a few seconds. In the MacBook Air, I'm just close the application, 
and reopen it and it only took four or five seconds so it's not a big deal and i'm sure with the firmware update they will fix it one of the biggest question is the battery life they say 16 18 hours what is true and false let me explain when i'm watching only youtube videos 10 minutes of YouTube video, it's only one percentage. What is equal 1000 minutes, so it can be 16 hours with one battery. But I'm heavy editing and it took only four hours. So it's of course less than 16 hour and less than half day, but I'm really heavy editing. And now let's talk about the performance side by side with my old MacBook Pro and this tiny MacBook Air. I'm imported a full wedding catalog with 1000 photos. I'm edited one photo and copied the settings to all of the 1000 pictures. With the new MacBook Air it only takes 12 minutes. But what's more interesting is the export time. With the MacBook Air it was just only 17 minutes with the full wedding catalog 1000 pictures. In the other side my old MacBook Pro does the jobs more than 34 minutes. And keep in mind, I'm using the Lightroom Classic, what is not updated with the M1 chip. But it was interesting to see with Final Cut, there was not much a difference. I exported a six gigabyte 4K footage in less than nine minutes. And let's talk about the downsides. One of the downside is the small screen. This is only a 13 inch screen, what is it's okay if you have to run and you can do the work here, but I used to work in a 15 inch screen and I think it's a must. But you can use it with an external monitor with no problem. The second problem is the lack of ports. It has only two USB-C ports and the headphone and that's it. I'm really sad there is no SD card reader, but hopefully in the newer model they will have. So the two port is not so much because you have to charge your laptop and you have only one port left for your hard drive. But the good thing, if you have an external monitor, what is capable to give 60 watt power, you can charge your laptop via the external monitor. So comparing with other companies, the MacBook screens are pretty color accurate as well. And last thing, the sound, I'm pretty surprised. The sound speaker is only the half size of my MacBook Pro, but the sound is better. I think it's a little bit heavy boosted, but it has a really good 3D sound compared with my MacBook Pro, what is more sounds like a phone. So if you are a professional photo or videographer, don't be afraid, even you buy the base model 8 GB MacBook Air or the Pro, it's no matter. If you have money, it's not a big deal because it's only $200 difference between the 8 GB or the 16 GB. So if you have the money, go with the 16 GB. But don't worry, the 8 GB is more than enough. From the video side, I'm editing 4K footages. I'm using Olympus cameras and also use Blackmagic 4K Pocket Cinema camera. I had a big video music project, you can see the video here, and I'm edited a huge amount of Blackmagic video files there. You can see it's a very high timeline with lot of layers and everything, and it goes through easily. Show of proof, let's check Red Row 8K footage. <laughs> So as you see, this is Red Row 8K footage and let me show you, this is no problem and let's see. No lagging nothing. You can easily edit red row 8K footage with only the base model MacBook Air. And let me show you how my old MacBook Pro handled the red row footage. You can see the difference, right? I hope it helps you to understand how the new M1 chip works 
and if the new MacBooks are good for your work. If you like this video, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment, share and see you next time. Bye.